Hello, my name is Angel Dacal Nieto. I will present the paper Integrating a Data Analytics System in Automotive Manufacturing Background Methodology and Learn Lessons. The authors of this paper are CITAC, the Automotive Technology Center of Galicia, a research and technology organization in Northwest Spain with more than 800 people and devoted to R&D, focused especially in automotive manufacturing. Uh, this uh, paper comes from the Processes and Industry 4.0 department. The other department, Stellantis, uh, very well known, automotive OEM, and uh, the participation comes from the Vigo factory, Vigo in the northwest of Spain. As introduction, one of the main automotive industry trends right now is customization. Uh, it means that all units are potentially different with millions of potential combinations. On the other hand, automotive industry is one of the most competitive industries in, in the world, always demand more quality, more efficiency and more productivity. And as a solution, data analytics as the combination of ICT and manufacturing in which we call Industry 4.0. Data analytics, we know it can support decision making in the factory by using more reliable data. It means data with better quality or more recent or aggregated. In essence, data analytics uh, comes from having an automatic parallel system collecting data from different data sources and try to translate it into information to allow different things, especially quality prediction, predictive maintenance, knowledge discovery, optimization of parameters and others. In this paper, what we want to do is present the process of description, integration and usage of a data analytics system in the Stellantis Vigo factory in Spain. We all know there are plenty of software based uh, big data solutions in the market, uh, but the implementation, especially the successful integration of these systems is not obvious. Um, it's full of difficulties and challenges. We believe that presenting this path of implementation and integration in a large company can be useful as a guide and as a methodology to inspire others to perform the same action uh, in their companies. The problems and learn lessons, uh, I, we believe they can be applicable worldwide. So in this presentation, after this introduction, we will review the background and the factory environment, all these things that happen in factories which affect the integration and implementation of a data analytics system. We will talk about the methodology we have followed, uh, the importance of the economical impact, some of the learned lessons, and finally some conclusions. Well, the main purpose of a data analytics system is basically supporting decision making to improve productivity, quality and efficiency in the factory. And this means uh, avoiding uh, no quality situations, optimizing parameters, identifying uh, sources to improve the energy efficiency or maximizing the production. What do we find in factories, OEMs and tiers, is usually that they have many different information systems in their daily routine to approach diverse functions. These systems normally have the data confined, so this means that it's not obvious how to reach this data because they usually don't share the data uh, between them, not all the data that they have. The final objective is to relate every production variable, all the temperatures, all the energy, or the welding parameters, whatever happens while the part is being produced. We want to relate these variables with a specific produced part, for instance, in this case, a car. We, we call this the instance of the part, which is a feature vector with every involved variable during the manufacturing process. This variable glutination, this building of the instance of the part is not obvious at all. Um, factories, by default, we believe they are not prepared to create this part instance. And one of the causes uh, why that happens is because manufacturing industry right now mostly follows an automation based approach, which means industry 3.0 approach, where manufacturing lines are mostly rigid. So once a project is industrialized, only minor changes can be made. Uh, machines are not globally monitored. Some of them are, but we cannot say 100% are monitored. Uh, still today, some processes uh, are used in paper or non exploitable electronic formats. And sometimes productivity efficient data, other KPIs are known a posteriori, not in real time. So it means that if we change, if we, if we shift to industry 4.0 approach, we will face some changes. Um, 
right now in a factory we find that OT and IT layers, so automation layer and uh, information system layers, are um, uh, ruled by different departments with different purposes are usually confined. Uh, OT, which contains much of the process data that are very interesting for a data analytic system, uh, usually uh, have volatile data. They, it means that they are not uh, stored globally. They, they just uh, are there to keep the process alive. We have, of course, many field devices of different technologies and ages. We have what we call the brownfield scenario, which means that we have to uh, work in the implementation and integration while the factory is producing, which obviously is complicated. And the, a very well-known problem, the lack of representative non-biased standardized historical data. So not every potentially interest in data is available. It means that the good data set, the good uh, source of information, it's hard to find. And of course, uh, all these sources are heterogeneous. Other challenges which are related more with human has aspects is that there is not a huge experience in analytics in the factory personnel, of course. Um, this uh, challenge of the lack of control, uh, historically factories have been f uh, filled with uh, polyvalent engineers and right now this approach of data analytics force to have new jobs, this data engineer, data scientist, uh, and this is obviously a challenge. Uh, the maintenance of a photo zero system, of a data analytics system, of an artificial intelligence system, who's going to do it? Um, well, everything related with the operator related data, GDPR issues in this case, ethics and biases issues as well. The simplification of interfaces and HMI. Um, so we should take care of how we present information and how we uh, allow means to interact with the configuration of the system with a factory personnel. Maybe in the future, conversational bots is an alternative. And in general, everything around trustworthiness of AI is how to trust, really trust in the results of analytics and AI. More challenges in the factory. Um, Everything that we implement in the factory, especially a data analytics system, has to be profitable. So we cannot uh, think of long integration processes. We need uh, short uh, victories uh, to keep the hierarchy uh, involved. Um, the integration has to be iterative and incremental based on pilots. So we cannot afford, we cannot think about uh, covering the whole factory only one step. We have to define uh, pilots and measure the advance through these pilots. A photo zero project is not something to purchase. Everything it will require uh, deep changes, time of the factory, new skills, of course, external help and investments. It's not something just uh, buy the thing and install. It doesn't work like that. Again, the brownfield scenario, the capacity of absorbing innovations while producing is limited. So this should guide the integration schedule and of course cybersecurity when we merge or when we connect OT and IT layers. So after all these challenges, uh, how did we do it? Uh, well, we uh, defined this methodology that we followed from the beginning and we think is interesting to share. Of course, we start with the problem description. Uh, first, we define a long-term roadmap. We divided the area of, uh, of work in subzones and pilots. Uh, we prioritized this and we started with the first one. Um, this prioritization is directed towards the potential economical impact of this zone. We will comment uh, further and we defined architecture and tools. In this zone, we identified data sources, we structured these data sources, and we started a manual experimentation. Once the manual experimentation was successful, we started to monitor these variables automatically. Then we created dashboards and we applied some basic statistical control tools. And then we started with more advanced analysis and daily use. At the very end, we measured the real economical impact of the uh, specific analysis in this specific zone. The tools that we defined uh, can be all part of a big data analytics suit or can be a combination of solutions. In our case, we have identified at least four types. First, the data gathering and, and monitoring. So we need something to gather data from heterogeneous sources of data. Then the storage of this data, 
this includes data structuration and of course here's where when we create the instance of the manufacturing part once we have uh, things storage visualizational alarms which is consumed by the technicians in the factory and then finally analysis different types of analysis um, simulation of what if improvements comparator which uh, allows us to uh, solve uh, crisis uh, of course seek for correlations potential causalities which can find uh, improvement rules we have used a priori rules and this can of course be in real time with the stored data or can be um, ad hoc analysis uh, so we can uh, try to improve the process with historical data this is a general purpose architecture that we have used in essence, we gather data from the OT layer, then we combine this information from the uh, OT layer with group information systems from which we collect all the interesting information. And finally, we send everything to a data analytics uh, uh, suite cloud uh, so we can access this data uh, from inside and outside the factory. It's interesting to note the data sources are, uh, of course, one of the uh, more important parts of the, of the analysis. Uh, we usually classify the data sources as product, process, and environmental data. And we also classify with in and out data. Uh, of course, out data would be this classification of uh, uh, for quality purposes, manual or automatic means, or in, in reliability problems, for example, if a machine uh, it has a problem or has to stop. Economical input is very important for us. Uh, we, f before each pilot, we try to quantify the potential economical inc impact of a, a specific uh, actuation. And then after the project is finished, after this pilot is finished, we try to estimate the real uh, economical impact. It depends on the, tab, on, the, on the task. If it's quality, uh, of course, if we save reworking time, uh, we save money. Energy impact, if we are able to uh, save energy, of course, this means money as well. Production improvements to increase the production capacity. If we, maybe we can save material, maybe we can improve the reliability of one machine, so we save costs of um, to, to solve the incidents, or maybe we uh, avoid some destructive testing. Uh, it, can, it depends, of course, in the specific analysis we are performing. Apart from this quantitative uh, economical impact, we have this qualitative and cultural impact because we allow to visualize data, we allow uh, process understanding, we set up alerts and we solve crises. So we believe this has a multiplier effect. We believe that at least every hour spent interacting with the data analytics system can save up to three hours of expert time. So this multiplier effect has cultural changes and of course in the future this unblocks a lot of opportunities for other innovation project projects. This methodology that we have presented uh, is being applied in Vigo since 2017 in the Stellantis factory. We started in the paint shop and we have progressively extended to the rest of the zones on the factory. Right now, we are monitoring more than uh, 5,000 variables in real time. Uh, we have measured benefits in quality, uh, in production time saving, energy saving, and especially in expert time saving, uh, doing all these activities and the applications having essentially uh, quality, reliability, energy, and uh, crisis management as well. We can share some learn lessons. We can say that the factories right now are very, very optimized and they manufacture in an excellent way. It is, is very difficult to find uh, improvements. Uh, for that, the process experts are key to integrate. We cannot uh, analyze a data set or uh, we cannot perform, of course, this kind of task without the experts. We have to work inside the factory. Analyzing data, as I say, is not only analyzing data on a machine. It requires much more intermediate steps, for example, data validation. So this interaction with experts and data engineers, data, data scientists is very important. Of course, we need a lot of time just to structure data, just to have analyzable data. As we say, data are scarce, not only uh, any kind of data, but especially representative non-biased data. Short-term victories are very important to keep the hierarchy engaged in the project. Interoperability is a challenge 
to get information from all these information systems which uh, live in a factory. And essentially, the simpler the better. Uh, we, um, we know the manufacturing process is usually modifiable, so sometimes we prefer hints instead of uh, inline machine learning prediction models. We have used um, explainable AI techniques, such as, for example, the a priori rules. We, we believe that uh, the simpler the better in the factory. So as a conclusion in this paper, we have presented the background and the justification to industrialize a data analytics solution in an automotive environment. Uh, we have presented our methodology and the lessons that we have extracted from our experience. And we, we believe this is uh, interesting to inspire and guide similar process in the future. As a key point for us, the economical impact of the usage of the, the solution is very relevant and it should be permanently in mind. And for us, this is, well, the first one of many steps uh, which will continue in the future. Uh, this is a deep cultural change, which is not only a thing of one year or five years. We believe this is for a long period of time. And that, and of course, this will be amplified in the next year and generations. We want to thank uh, Junta de Galicia and the Ministry of Science and Innovation from Spain, uh, because we have received funding for them to support this work. Thank you for them. And thank you very much.